Welcome, I'm Rogers Anderson, Williamson County's mayor, and as we travel around Williamson County today, we have the opportunity to visit with a gentleman that most people know throughout Williamson County, and John Green. Good. Thank you. Thanks for being with us today. Well, I appreciate the invitation. It's always yeah. good to come out. You know, I was sitting here talking to you ahead of time, and most everybody in Williamson County recognizes your face, associates your face with real estate and Boy Scouts. And insurance. And insurance. So let's back up a little bit. Let's talk about John Green, where you're born here in Williamson County, a little bit about your family and how we got up to the present stage. And kind of take us through that. Your brothers, your sisters, your mom and dad, just talk to us a little bit today. Okay, we go back, I guess, to my grandfather, Walter Roberts, who was uh, president of the old Harpeth Bank uh, way back. And then from that time on, he uh, retired from that and got into the real estate business and under Roberts and McGavock. And McGavock was a cousin of my mother's. They lived on 3rd Avenue there in Franklin, and McGavocks did. Uh, they were old-timey Franklin people. Uh, Mr. Roberts had three girls. He had my mother, uh, Ewan Green, and had uh, Sarah Berry, Sarah Roberts Berry, and had uh, Susan Lee Briggs, Fess Briggs' his wife of the VGA. So those three girls were in town, and they lived here, obviously. And his Berry, his lot and my lot, where I grew up, backed up together, so I got to grow up with her children in town. So uh, those three girls, uh, over the years, uh, my father and I, John Green, was born on 4th Avenue uh, up at the far end towards railroad track up there. He had uh, two brothers and one sister. Uh, his father was, uh, had a store there on Main Street, a clothing store, I guess it was. Uh, many years ago, so I was born down on 4th Avenue towards town, so I got to go up and see my grandpa's, you know, when I could. Yeah. And uh, I grew up there on 4th Avenue, went to uh, Franklin Grammar School, got to walk to school. Now the Franklin Grammar School, where was it located at at that it's time? It's down there at Five Points where the uh, library, I suppose, it used to be the old library. Yeah. Archives now. Archives building. It was an old two-story building. Uh, they, to keep the dust down, they would mop the floors with kerosene. <laughs> this is how they kept the dust down. Big two-story frame building. Of course, when it caught on fire, there wasn't any hope, you know. It, it just burned. But um, I can recall carrying a blanket to the first grade and going to sleep at 1 o'clock in the room there. That's what the teacher let you do. So uh, I walked to school and walked home. Uh, later on, ride my bicycle, you know, that type of thing. Big group of in-town boys, everybody knew each other. All of my teachers were very good. Most of them I went to the 4th Avenue Church of Christ with. They were all Church of Christ ladies. They, they lived within sight yeah, of the school, too. And Mr. Horn was the principal. He was a, wore a hat uh, like Abraham Lincoln. And that was his style, and a very good, sturdy man. And... I made a mistake of shooting a pea shooter at his hat one day at a fire <laughs> drill. Out on the sidewalk, I think I shot it 15 times before he figured out who it was shooting it. <clears throat> of course, he said, you know, you go to the office. <laughs> this is all right. But, um, well, now, in your time, if you don't mind me interrupting you, who were some other men and women that, might, uh, that we might know about here in Williamson County that you kind of grew up with as a young boy and before you got on into the high school level? Oh, uh, well, I always think back about Harry Guffey. Harry, Dr. Mr. Guffey, Guffey Dr. Was, Guffey. Uh, he, he, he was in the hospital right down the street from my house, you see, so I would see him frequently. And my aunt, uh, Ms. Briggs, uh, they taught him at BGA. And uh, as a doctor, my aunt went to him every week just to see him, I think, you know how that goes. But um, he, he was, uh, we bought eggs from his mother and daddy. 
they lived out on Liberty on uh, Lewisburg Pike had a farm out there, and my mother would get eggs from Mr. Guffey. And uh, Harry was uh, he was a special person in this world, and not many people like him. Uh, that were physically strong and uh, very smart, and uh, did what they had to do. You know, a big army man. He operated on those kids in the, in the mud over there. You know, and stuff like that. But he was he was uh, one you would think of. Most of the rest of them are just ordinary, ordinary people to walk around Franklin. You know, lived there, and didn't cause any trouble. Uh, but it it was the interesting things were slow. Uh, not anybody had any money. You didn't have. If I got to go to Nashville to buy a cap gun, and once a year I was doing good. You know, for a quarter, cost a quarter to go to the movie. And uh, it was a good time. We had a lot of good boys, a lot of good girls. We just, uh, I look at my pictures of my grades every now and then, you know. Jane Montague, Jane McCall Montague, um, we was out on 96. She and I were in grade together, uh, all the way through grammar school, I guess. Fleming Williams, the sheriff, one, one of them. Uh, but most, a lot, a lot of them now are gone, of course, but there's some of them still around. So you went on to high school? Went on to BGA. My uncle was headmaster. Mr. Briggs was headmaster. He was my uncle. So all my family, my daddy and my brother, uh, all went there. And uh, we, had, we had good teachers, but war was going on. So our teachers generally were men who couldn't go to war in one way or the other. Uh, uh, but they were very good school teachers, and uh, we did well. It, um, my seatmate joined the Army right before I was going to have to do something. Bobby Aiken, kin to all these Aikens here, Bobby, very good boy. He didn't last any time before he lost his life over there in Europe. And so my father said, let's do something different. So we went down to 8th Avenue in Nashville, and I joined the Navy while I was still in VGA. They let me finish. Uh, on Saturday I graduated, on Monday morning I was on the train going to Chicago. So that was okay. Um, I went in the Navy, got through that, and put me on a troop train to San Francisco. We rode a troop train from Chicago to San Francisco. And that same time they declared the war over. <clears throat> but uh, we went on and uh, got on a ship. I had to go around the storm out in the Pacific. It took three weeks, so we went to the Philippines, and I stayed there for nearly a year. Absolutely right on this little island that this storm that they had fairly recently that hit the Philippine Islands. My island was the first island it hit, <laughs> so there ain't nothing left over there now, I'm sure. But um, I worked. I was a worker. Uh, they didn't have time to train me to do anything. They put me on the beach to repair a landing craft. That was my first job. Had a hole in the bottom from hitting the coral, you know. And they said, you got to fix it. Well, I didn't know they would fix it, but I stayed out there in that hot sun working on it till I did something with it. <clears throat> and then uh, came back, uh, and uh, they assigned me again on, a, on an LSM. Uh, that had been in dry dock, and we were going down to the canal zone and up to Mobile. And that's what we did. We were full of ammunition. And we got halfway up to uh, New Orleans, and they radioed us, we don't want any ammunition in uh, New Orleans. Turn around and go somewhere else. So we had to turn around in the mud flats and go back over to Mobile and uh, on the dock over there, and we unloaded all of our ammunition there on the, this dock out in the middle of nowhere. So that was kind of my experience in the Navy. Um, Came home, and two weeks later I was in Vanderbilt, which was a mistake. I should have given myself a little more time. But I got an engineering school and managed to make it through that. Uh, well, why was it a mistake? I am not that smart. I'm not born, uh, I enjoy that, but I'm not that smart. They are smart people. I found that out a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, I would agree. They're smart people. They're smart boys. They're smart girls. And somebody has to tell you that you're not that smart, but nobody ever told me that. <laughs> but anyway, I got through and 
the year I graduated, there was no demand for engineers anywhere in the country, if you could believe that. Uh, the civil, chemical, electrical, and mechanical engineers, out of those four schools, three boys were able to find work. The rest of them went to the radio stations, went to the banks. I came out here with my father in the insurance business, what he was doing then. And uh, that's just the way it was. And so uh, uh, I managed uh, from an invitation to get involved with the Boy Scouts, which is the best thing I ever did for me. It might not appeal to anybody else, but it, uh, it gave me a sort of a focus on what I could do or what I needed to do. And so that was around 1950? 51, yes, sir. Uh, Another boy, a friend of mine, uh, asked me to restart. In Franklin, there were three scout troops. And in about 1942, they all shut down because there wasn't any men to be scoutmasters. They all gone to war. So they, they were shut down till 50, 51. In 1948, I guess, Mr. L. I. Mills came here. An army man moved here as principal of the elementary school. Mr. Mills was a big, sturdy man, a very good man. He started uh, the Presbyterian Scout Troop back up, and he got some people to help him. And uh, then uh, I was asked, I guess in 50 or 51, to help start up the Methodist Troop. So I did, and went along three or four years with that. I didn't have any experience, no equipment, no nothing, but. About 1955, I got a call one day from one of the men at the bank says, we've got 15 kids in town causing trouble. We need another scout troop, won't you take them? I said, well sure, we don't have anywhere to meet, we don't have any equipment, but I'll do it. So that's how I got started in it. We met in chicken houses, we met in the old high school that burned up on Columbia Avenue. Uh, met in the garage, uh, we met nearly everywhere, but we managed to get it done. Why, why was it important for you, Mr. Green? I was Green? born that way. Uh, I can't stop it. <laughs> when you find something that you enjoy and you're born to do, you have to stay with it in order to keep going. And that's just the way it is. And uh, we've done good. We're doing good now. We had, this past year, we've had 18 Eagle Scouts out of our troop. We're giving one Eagle Award Sunday, another 10 next Sunday. Uh, uh, it's just remarkable, most we've ever had. And some of the boys, as we've gotten into your Boy Scout years, and I know somewhere in there, uh, shortly, somewhere along in that period of time, you met this uh, woman you married to. Yeah, they, they, I, I would have been a good bachelor. <laughs> <laughs> My boy's a good bachelor. I've got an uncle that's a good bachelor. Taught English, Ph.D. over at Clemson. He never married. Got an aunt that was never married. <laughs> it's all right. But uh, no, um, Louise was from Nunley down in Hickman County, and she had kin people here, and they, they managed uh, for us, and uh, it worked. We done good. Got a, a daughter and a boy. My daughter, uh, uh, Lenora Clifford, she's a... Uh, a commercial insurance underwriter down in Cool Spring. She's a smart girl. She's got two daughters. One's a nurse, a nurse, and the other will be in a couple of years. And my boy lives here uh, on 96 out here, and he's uh, worked with me. He's an insurance broker and real estate broker. So uh, it's all right. We've made it this far. <laughs> well, I happen to know that a lot of people, I could have just as well interviewed your wife yeah. as you. And she's very involved in our community. And uh, Louise is Phi Beta Kappa, Vanderbilt. She's a smart girl. She's educated. She's been to, to the Holy Land once or twice over there. She likes all that, you know, and smart in it more so than I am. I, 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 that's not me, so that's all right. But um, she has a lot of friends. She has, and she's she's just very personable, outgoing. Well, thank you. Yes, she is. She. Let me let me ask you something. When you talk about Boy Scouts over your, what are we talking about, 50, 60 years? Yes, somewhere along in there, probably. Well, if you started in the 50s and we're in the 14s, that's about 60 some odd years yes, there. Yes, it's been that long. Uh, I know it's been very rewarding, but I also have heard over the years from many of the young men 
that have been in your troops that have gone on and they really appreciated that period of time in their life that they were Boy Scouts. This is a happy time of their life. This is, in some cases, the most happy time they'll ever have is those from 11 to 17 years, and they need to take advantage of that. Uh, we've got now 20 scout troops in the county. And for a long time, we were three. Now we've got 20. And uh, we have new boys nearly every week come to us that want to be Boy Scouts. And we take them in, and I place them in a patrol. You know, we've got nine patrols. And uh, I've got awfully good men. I'm very fortunate. And women. Uh, we take women in, too. We don't get any of them out. That really help. They're smart people. Uh, it is another new wrinkle now is these boys that are making Eagle are getting big college scholarships. It's remarkable. They didn't have this for many, many years. But I don't think I'd tell any secret, but one of our boys recently has received a scholarship. He's ROTC, he's the Eagle Scout, smart kid, but he's received a scholarship estimated to be valued at $180,000. And uh, that's remarkable. <laughs> well, and when you stop to think about whether you go to Franklin Special School District in your formative years, or go to the Williamson County Public School Systems, or you go to one of our private schools, such as BGA, and you couple that with uh, the parents and how they raise their children. Uh, many of the young men that you have in your troops come from outstanding homes, but a lot of those young men need that guidance. I know in my formative years and as a teenager, you some, sometimes get a little sidetracked. Oh, uh, it's very easy. And That's right. in today's world, and I've raised three children, or help to raise three children, uh, it's awful easy to get sidetracked with so many activities and things going on. And it's gratifying to hear that still to this day in 2014, that many of our young men and their parents want them to be involved in the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts and the other worthwhile organizations in our community. Well, they are, according to the paper, I think there are 1,800 clubs, so to speak, registered in the county here. And in that 1,800 groups of clubs, there are 13,000 kids. Well, that's six or seven apiece, you know, that's, and we've got 85 or 90 in our troop. So it's a whole lot of things for the little boys to do. Mr. Green, when you, when you look back in your life, and I'm sure there were several milestones you can look at now and see, um, that made a difference, or I made a difference, or my daddy made a difference, or what, what really, in your mind, caused Franklin to get on this uh, growth pattern we're in today? I mean, you've been in the insurance business, which I stayed in 26 years before I ever became really involved here in this county, retired. But what's, as you look out, you're in the insurance business, you're in the real estate business, so you've really got your hands, you've really got your fingers on the pulse of what's going on in our community. And although there's a huge need for many of the clubs that we have, that's an individual choice where a boy chooses to go in that. Sometimes the parents may have to encourage them a little bit through yeah. different methods. Yeah. But you look back over Franklin and particularly in the last 50 years that you certainly been very involved in our community. What are some things that really stick out in your mind that has made this community, this county, what it is today? Franklin uh, has always been a special place in the world. It started out that way. Uh, I don't think anybody particularly said it that way, but it has just been a special place in this world that people came. Uh, I can recall uh, two boys that lived down behind the post office. Uh, had a mother and went to school with them. But the big time people in New York would come to Franklin to look for boys with the idea in two, three, six, eight years 
I could hire that boy. That really went on. One of my friends there that grew up behind the post office, good looking boy, nice boy, uh, raised by his mother, the bank, uh, he, he managed to get in Vanderbilt. And the bank uh, from New York came looking. And they were gonna pick three boys in the, in the country. And this boy was one of them. They picked him. He spent his life on Wall Street up there. Just a little kid from behind the post office back here. Uh, another boy who lived right behind the post office with older parents was a little boy we called Pinky. Pinky sold grit. You remember the newspaper? I was sure grit? do. Well, Pinky was a little boy that sold grit to get a little money for mom and daddy. Mama was a babysitter, uh, and daddy wasn't able to do much other than sell papers. Pinky was able to read when he was just a baby. So people in town took interest in him. Dr. Guffey took interest in him. And somehow some of them gave him the ability to become a doctor. Uh, Pinky, Pinky has been in, in one of the major doctors in, in uh, Los Angeles major hospital for 40 years. Operating on people every day. He called me recently, came by to see me. He said, Mr. Green, this is Pinky. I said, Pinky hadn't heard of him in 40 years. But that's kind of what went on. If, if, if you, the people would help you. If you had a talent or you had something to go in, people would come in to say, you know, I could help you do this, help you do that. When your time comes. Oh, it ain't coming. <laughs> I hope you're right. <laughs> Let what do you hope? What are they, what are they going to put on your p tombstone, Boy well, Scouts? Let me, let me tell you one more really interesting little tale. But I had a boy in my scout troop who lived down on Fourth Avenue, down below where I was born. But he got in trouble taking things. And the mayor, Mr. Murray, was mayor back then. He was involved with the scouts. This little boy was one of my scouts. And they were going to put him in jail. And he was mean, he was a mean child. He really was. But it, what? Uh, I went to see his mom and daddy, and Mr. and Mr. Burry had come to me and says, if you'll get permission, I'll carry him to Boystown, Nebraska. I will get on the train with him down here at the train station, and I'll carry him up there personally. I said, Mr. Burry, they probably won't let him go. So, but I went to see his mom and daddy. They said, we can't do anything with him. If you don't do something, he's going to jail. So I told Mr. Burry, so Mr. Burry got on the train with that little boy. That little boy stayed up there seven years, never came home. It turned out to be a Greyhound bus driver. <laughs> so Mr. Burr saved that little boy's life just by having one person interested in somebody like that. We've got about five minutes left. Oh, God. Time goes fast. <laughs> well, picking, it does. When you're picking your brains. Yeah. A lot of things have changed over the years in your lifetime, and there'll be many more changes yes. in, long after you and I are gone. I know there's probably some things you're very proud of. I won't go back to my original question. No. But I know there's some things that you're very proud of in your life. What are they? What am I proud of? Uh, well, I've got a good wife. She does good. I've got a good daughter. She does good. got a good boy. Uh, he does good. I've got two cute granddaughters. Uh, they do good. The oldest one is a state champion swimmer, and she's a registered nurse down in Mobile now. The other one is in UT. She's got two more years before she gets to be a registered nurse. And so uh, that's, that's what we got. And I'm fortunate enough to, to have inherited a piece of ground where we can Boy Scout. You have to be able to have some freedom to Boy Scout. You can't have people picking at you if so to speak. And uh, you've got to say, well, you know, he cut this tree down, it ain't the end of the world. <laughs> that type of thing, you know. But uh, that's, that we do good, we've had a lot of good. I got a photograph this week from one of my Eagle Scouts who's the pilot of a big C-130. You know, that's the four-engine airplane that um, is in Germany. He flies all over Europe every week. And it's, he's the pilot of that thing, a little boy from Lewisburg Pike out here. Uh, got another Eagle Scout coming back from Afghanistan. He's been over there two years. He's in the Marine Corps. He comes by to see us. Uh, we're fortunate. 
to have all those boys. They take interest. Uh, the men that helped me with the scout troops are Eagle Scouts. And they grew up here. And uh, they're the ones that make it go. One man, you know, he's just there. The rest of them make it go. And they're good people. And uh, one or two of the men that helped us were in our troop many years ago. So we are fortunate to have them come back. We, we uh, encourage that. <laughs> we have a big garden. We raise a big garden. We have honeybees. We have Mr. Scott, who's with the state, is a major honeybee man. And uh, we do good with our, we are one of the four scout troops in America that have honeybees. And we're trying to increase our honeybee population. Which is very difficult uh, over the last couple of years because of the diseases and yes, the pesticides that we use. The bees are not uh, producing the honey like they need to. That's right. It's, uh, they, they're having a hard time too. So uh, we, we are fortunate. We have a cold forage. I've got two new dads taking that on that, uh, that are learning how to heat metal, you know. We have a ham radio where they talk around the world every day. The men come. Uh, my boys are trying to learn that. That's, the, that's kind of a difficult thing, you know. But they talk around the world right there at the scout barn and uh, communicate and have a good time with all that. And uh, they could build files like you did, you know. And Have a good time. Have a good time. I know there's people going to be watching this show that think, um, I, I believe I want my son or my grandson to become involved in the Boy Scouts. How do they get a hold of John Green? Well, I, I, would, I would suggest, first of all, look at find a scout troop close to your house so mom and daddy don't have to drive. Uh, so far, you know, once or twice a week. Uh, I've had boys drive here from Lebanon to be Boy Scouts for four or five years. Daddy bring them every, every Tuesday, every Saturday. That's a long way, you know, but they would do it just, just to make it work. Uh, find a scout troop, go visit, visit all the scout troops, what I tell them. And then when they get through, come back and be with us. <laughs> <laughs> We're, we're just about out of time, right. and I, I want to say thank you. For, n number one, I hope people can realize when they see this interview, you're a man of great service, and you have given back just like um, we're instructed to do. Well, you and, must uh, say and that. You're, uh, you're a very humble man. Frank, in Williamson County, I, I told you to start with, you make a good impression for Williamson County on your shows and on your in your paper, I saw you picture in the paper this week, like I said. Uh, and that's important, I think, for the county to have a good face. Uh, John Green's a good face for Williamson County. Well, John Green's a man of service, great deal of enthusiasm for the Boy Scouts. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you. We'll see you around the county. Have a good day.